And one minute has elapsed from the notes that we have, Gary, of that original burn starting at PDI. And you have carrier lock. That's MD asking if we are getting the ground stations locked on to Nova C. That carrier lock call, Gary, we expect that to come from GroundNet or COM, that conversation possibly not happening on our public channel that we have access to. We're just standing by to hear that uh, come through the channels as we approach almost two minutes since we estimated the landing time. We did get a few call outs on the side, folks coming into the room saying there was about a two minute forgiveness in our timetables. We are checking our antenna reception. Checking antenna reception. And we're standing by, Gary. We're standing by just uh, as we approach 5.26 p.m. Central Standard Time. Given those mission director's notes of the flexibility between what we were tracking, what we were given was just about 5.24. All stations, this is MD. Please look back through your logs and confirm the last information you had, and we'll determine if this is a comm outage. And that's the mission director, Gary. These are our notes here of what we believed. We talked about the comm outages with the lander making autonomous decisions. This is the process of going through the last bit of data that came into Nova Control and working to verify, okay, this is the last bit of data. Where was this, was the lander possibly going? How do we look for it and establish those communications? Nova C uses four antennas placed at the top of the lander that are designed to capture these communications. But we did expect this. We talked about it, that this is a communications challenge in it of itself, and right now we're standing by to hear that communications call out. We're just a little more than three minutes from the time of the, when the clock reads zero for Nova C landing on the moon. And we just checked with our team here in the broadcast booth, decided to let's stay on this. All the chatter we are not hearing on this public channel, Gary, all things indicate that we are working to solve a communications, a possible communications uh, challenge in this moment. So we're gonna continue to stand by. For those following along. MD Prime on I'm on. Go for Prime. Yeah, I guess you, Hold the room looking for uh, states, and uh, we're going to go ahead and cycle the ground transmitter on Goonhilly and uh, do some RF sweeps. Is that your plan? That's correct. Roger, copy. And that's just what we had in mind in our notes, Gary, is that if we encounter a communications challenge, we mentioned how difficult it is to land on the moon and continually have those communications. What you just heard there is folks talking about using the Goonhilly Earth Station Limited uh, dish in the UK to do a sweep looking for that signal. We mentioned that autonomous process of the lander reassigning itself somewhere that it believes is safe. Going into it, we heard that the HRN camera was functioning and able to make those decisions after what was a two-hour orbit of problem solving with Intuitive Machines' TRN and HRN cameras, the laser rangefinders assigned to those. Those are the ones that Intuitive Machines installed inside the navigation pods. The laser rangefinders were not activated. We went to NASA and asked to use two of the laser beams on the navigation Doppler LiDAR. That's right. And spent two hours in orbit. Team, we're going to confirm our pointing vector with our antenna for post-landing. 
Yep. We spent about two hours in orbit to solve that problem. We got good readings on the way down. And right now, we are working to confirm communications on the surface of the moon, roughly around the Malapert A region, that is the South Pole region of the moon. That's right. What we do know is the power descent initiation. We were following along in the status calls. Uh, we executed a pitch over maneuver and we're counting down the clock to a landing time uh, of 5.23 p.m. Central Time. Well, Josh described those processes of working on the communications component to confirm data from the lander, pulsing the teams surrounding him to check the status of Nova C and the data that they were receiving here in Nova Control to confirm landing. And part of that, Josh, as you described, is communications. We're standing by. Fido MD on IM1. QMD. Yeah, I'm looking at our uh, phase plane there for the, the last part of the flight. It looks like we had um, excellent pitch and yaw control throughout, but I did see a little bit of a roll excursion. Could it be that we landed off, uh, off angle and roll in the final phase? So I do see we get up to an eight degree excursion. Um, we're about to begin the, the roll maneuver, which is about terminal phase. The terminal phase, which is a, a large roll maneuver to get to to landing attitude. That's the latest last data point I have. Um, but up until that point, we were we were really solid. Right. So terminal phase begins at 30 meters. Um, or post HDA. Post HDA. Post HDA. 400 meters. Very good. And that's a great conversation confirming. Box that's good ground network, good for box scan. Make that go. Yeah, that was good confirmation of the process that we were very familiar with, talking about the attitude of the lander, making sure that those antennas are within direct line of sight with Earth stations, ground stations on Earth, excuse me. Mission Director at all stations, we're also updating our pointing vector with our dishes to make sure that they're tuned in on our final landing site. There's a call, we're searching for that communications back to the ground station. This one particularly is in the UK that's tracking us. And it's important to note, Gary, that we have an, an entire network dedicated to working these communications problems. It's been active this entire mission. And the largest, most powerful dish out of all of them is about a 64 meter dish in Australia. That time to search with that opportunity with the largest, most powerful dish, we're looking at about 12 to 13 hours after our estimated touchdown. So this is a process that we could be looking and searching for the lander signal for confirmation uh, for quite some time, but we're going to continue to listen in and stand by as our flight controllers are working with the ground station in the United Kingdom to work this issue, work this problem. It's another challenge, um, very similarly to the challenge solved just to make it this far. Science of life, we have a return signal we're tracking. We have an onboard fault detection system for our communications that after 15 minutes with lack of communication will power cycle the radios. And then after that, for another 15 minutes, it will then switch antenna pairs. So we have some time here to evaluate. We do have signal that we're tracking. So we'll see what happens. There's a great call out about the autonomous systems installed on our Nova C-class lunar lander named Odysseus. The process he's mentioning, Gary, is very similar to the one that we were preparing ourselves for at AOS, to where the lander has systems in place to recycle its antennas, to switch antenna pairs, and that was very similar to what we thought we were going to need to do after acquisition of signal. Um, when we separated from the second stage of the launch vehicle, if we made it to a certain point, the lander was autonomously programmed to start taking matters into its own hands, and that was the information that our mission director, Dr. We're not dead yet. <laughs> We're also not dead yet. Good. And 
the key here, Josh, is patience. It's 5.34 p.m. Mission Director Tim Crane confirming that it could take two phases of 15-minute increments to confirm the status of a landing. So we could be here and we'll stand by and monitor as Nova Controls to continues to work this issue. Yeah, tense moments inside of mission control with the most qualified folks. We're but picking we up a signal from our high gain antenna and uh, <laughs> transmitter. It's faint, but it's there. So stand by folks, we'll see what's happening here. All right, we're going to continue to stand by. Let's keep this camera on inside of Nova Control. It sounds like we are getting some kind of faint I signal. I want to send a series of commands to reactivate, make sure we're transmitting to keep the Quasonics active. We're still standing by the last call from mission director Dr. Tim Crane was that we were getting a faint signal from Odysseus's high gain antenna. All stations, this is uh, Mission Director on IM-1. We're evaluating uh, how we can refine that signal and uh, dial in the pointing for our dishes. What we can confirm, without a doubt, is our equipment is on the surface of the moon and we are transmitting. So congratulations, IM team. We'll see how much more we can get from that. Excellent call from our mission director, Empty Dr. Prime Tim Crane, on, uh, IM1. and over Go to our Prime. CEO, Steve Altman. Yeah, if I could just pass on a few words to the entire team in uh, Intuitive Machines at Superbab and here in the here in the uh, Mission Control, uh, what an outstanding effort! I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the si on the surface and we are transmitting. And uh, welcome to the moon, Houston. Odysseus has found his new home. An excellent call, and this is our team of Intuitive Machines mechanics and their families, their friends, everyone who has Chad, sacrificed so much to make it this to, uh, far. Stations. How about that call, Gary? That was something else, a faint signal. Now it's time to work on refining that signal. But Dr. Tim Crane, our mission director today, making the call, Odysseus has a new home. It shows the disciplines of the flight controllers in Nova Control. They waited until there was absolute confirmation that there was a signal, and then that was when they took the moment to celebrate. We saw that it wasn't just the individuals in Nova Control that contributed to the mission. The contributions to enable the success of Nova Sea's landing on the moon stretches far and wide. We showed, of course, some of the folks watching there, but really it extends even farther than this. A wonderful and truly amazing moment to celebrate. The U.S. has landed on the moon once again. And to everyone, you mentioned it goes beyond just the folks that we saw on camera waiting and working through those tense moments, but their friends, their families, and everything it took to get to this point. We're still expecting an image. We expect that to come down sometime in the future, especially as we look towards uh, some high-resolution images. Let's go ahead and... Um,
It sounds like we do have a message we'd like to cut to. Can we have that message uh, special for our folks, uh, our employees, and folks watching at home? Hey, that's right. With Nova C landing at Malapert A, congratulations, like you said, Josh, are flooding into the teams that made this happen. Really sets a tone for the American leadership and the future of a strong lunar economy. So here's NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. On the eighth day of a quarter million mile voyage, a voyage along the great cosmic bridge from the launch pad at the Kennedy Space Center to the target of the south pole of the moon, a commercial lander named Odysseus, powered by a company called Intuitive Machines, launched upon a SpaceX rocket carrying a bounty of NASA scientific instruments and bearing the dream of a new adventure, a new adventure in science, innovation, and American leadership in space, well, all of that aced the landing of a lifetime. Today, for the first time in more than a half century, the U.S. has returned to the moon. Today, for the first time in the history of humanity, a commercial company, an American company, launched and led the voyage up there. And today is a day that shows the power and promise of NASA's commercial partnerships. Congratulations to everyone involved in this great and daring quest at Intuitive Machines, SpaceX, and right here at NASA. What a triumph. Odysseus has taken the moon. This feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. Stay tuned. All right, thank you, Administrator Nelson. Again, Nova C and the United States has landed on the moon at 5.23 p.m. Central Time today, February 22nd, 2024. Congratulations to Intuitive Machines on the successful landing. Science and data gathering is already underway and will continue for roughly seven days on the lunar surface, activating payloads and gathering important scientific data to help ensure future successes in Artemis missions. For more about NASA's CLIPS initiative, visit nasa.gov slash CLIPS. Gary, it's been quite a journey <laughs> for all of us at Intuitive Machines. Thanks to NASA for the continued support to enable today's successful landing. And of course, everyone at Intuitive Machines, their friends and family who made all of this possible. That will wrap up our coverage of Intuitive Machines' IM-1 mission. Thanks for joining us.